This week, I want to do a quick episode about traveling and nursing your baby. And I thought this was timely not only because we're heading into the holiday season and because right now I am currently traveling with my two children across the country from Massachusetts to the Grand Canyon, but also because the episode that just released earlier this week was with Millie Godwin, a midwife from London who traveled during her extended maternity leave from the tip of South America all the way up to Canada. And then once she returned home, she did some more travel with her baby in their camper van. So definitely go check that out. So let's get into this. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having known only a handful of people who had ever breastfed and only seeing it up close from a couple of them, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a lactation consultant, and a childbirth educator. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to the Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding experiences through the lens of systemic barriers so that you know your breastfeeding struggles are not your fault and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is just your mindset. The schedule when you are traveling is not going to be the same as it is at home. And I know that when you have a baby, sometimes the schedule is so important. The feeding time is really important. The nap time is really important. And it really feels like if anything goes differently, then your baby is never going to be the same again. You'll never be able to get back to that schedule and your whole life is going to implode. But that's kind of the point of travel. And that's kind of the point of leaving your home and going into another environment. And so I really encourage you to think about travel being different from home and adapting to that. And the more we stress about trying to get our babies to squeeze into a schedule that is exactly like home when they're not at home, the more stressful it is going to be for us and for our babies. And so I encourage you to think about that and to try to adapt to kind of what is happening away from home a little bit, because there are some theories which show that cortisol does pass through babies into the breast milk. And so if you are super stressed out about the schedule, your babies then receive that cortisol, they become more stressed out, and then it becomes this vicious cycle where they are not able to sleep because they're so ramped up because you're so ramped up. If you can do anything to try to just set your mindset, whether it's that you're stressed about what the schedule is going to be while you're gone, whether it is that you're visiting family or you're taking your own vacation or you're traveling with people or you're traveling for work and your baby is coming with you or maybe there's some sort of family emergency that you have to tend to, I encourage you to think about just knowing that it's going to be different wrapping your mind around that and trying to do some kind of mindset shifting around that so that you can kind of begin to bring calm to your own body as you're preparing for this travel. Because even the travel itself can be stressful when you're thinking about, oh man, I used to be carefree. It was so easy to travel. And now I have all this extra stuff to think about, a whole extra person to travel with. And so the, the more carefree you can be about it, which I know I now travel with two kids. It's not really that carefree. The better experience you are going to have. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is whether you are traveling with a partner or alone, I've done both. Don't be afraid to ask for help, especially if you're traveling alone. Um, I've traveled alone in the airport with my two kids and people are so delighted to help you. So whether you have your hands full and it feels like you can't carry everything or your toddler is really freaking out and you just need somebody to like hold the baby for a second. I know that's a little harder right now during COVID. There are ways that people are delighted to help you. Hey, can you just hold my suitcase for a second? My hands are kind of full or... Um, can you just watch the baby, you know, even if they're not holding the baby, Hey, you know, 
there's some old lady in the airport. She's delighted to coo at your baby for a second with her mask on while you try to bring calm to the situation. If you are feeling overwhelmed, nine times out of 10, a stranger is very happy to help you do that. And so I want to encourage you, even if you do have a partner traveling and they are off at the bathroom or they need to go take care of something, don't be afraid to look to the world around you and build community wherever you are. I know that if you are more of an introvert or you're not used to asking for help, that can be a hard thing to do. Um, But I really encourage you to do that, even if you're already at the hotel. or wherever your destination is, um, reach out, make those connections. You'll be surprised at the people who step up to help you. Hi, listeners. I want to take a moment to make a quick request. In addition to continuing to hear ordinary people share their breastfeeding triumphs and struggles, I have big plans for the Milk Making Minutes, which includes asking incredible people we all admire to come on the show and share their stories of nursing their babies through amazing circumstances. I'm looking at you, Serena Williams, but there are others too. So in order for them to know this show is worth their time, I need my listeners to rate and review. So please take a minute to do that on your favorite listening app. That will bring more people to the show so that you can hear their amazing baby feeding stories of struggle and triumph. Thanks. So those two things are about mindset. Now let's get to some kind of practical stuff. So things uh, that you might need if you're traveling by plane. So more changes of clothes for you and your baby or your toddler than you think. So let's say um, you never travel with a change of clothes for yourself in the airport. Bring a change of clothes for yourself because if your baby has a blowout, you don't want to be in poopy clothes for the rest of the time. So at least have one change of clothes for yourself and then more than you think you need for both your babies and your toddlers. You would hate for your potty trained toddler to have an accident because they can't get up when the seatbelt light is on in the plane and they've been potty trained for two years, but they can't hold it for the amount of time that there is turbulence and they have that accident. Um, The other thing you might think about is a baby carrier. Even if you are typically not a baby carrier or a baby wearing person, these are fantastic for the airport because they give you two hands to be able to carry all the things that you need. I'm not a big fan of strollers when I'm traveling. I do not even take them. So um, my kids are out of strollers now, but even when um, they were stroller age, I never took them. Um, I left them at home. I always just used a carrier and that gave me two hands for everything I needed. Um, And I would back carry one child. I could hold another child if I needed and then carry all the stuff. And I always, before I had children, I never paid any extra money to check bags. After I had children, I always paid the extra money (laughs) if I could to check bags. And that allowed me to be able to just have my carry on luggage and have the extra hands available for my kids. For me, that was always worth it. I have that extra money to be able to do so. And then as far as toys go, uh, I always brought like little cars for toddlers to be able to play with. And I might even snag like a couple of extra dinosaurs, like a new toy that they didn't know they were getting for the airport that would always last a couple of hours for airport play. And then by the time that we were getting on the plane, that might be over. And for our family, we don't do tons and tons of screens, but we allow unlimited screens on airplanes and in cars for road trips only. We have podcasting apps. We allow unlimited Netflix shows that we download beforehand. We have Minecraft, 
We also have Epic Books, which is an app that allows you to be able to download books in case you don't have internet, and they can read the books themselves. They can listen to some audio books, or the books can be read to them, but they also see them on the pages. We also have Khan Academy Kids apps, some Elmo counting apps, some Elmo letter apps, Prodigy Math Game, which is a little better for older kids, and various others. So we allow both just normal screen time like TV and more educational apps. That's our philosophy. Every family has to decide for themselves what they do in relation to screens. We're way more strict at home than we are on the road when it comes to screens. And then as far as nursing the baby or nursing the toddler goes, we do not choose to use car seats on an airplane. I know a lot of people do. We choose to check our car seat um, in. You can check that for free, I believe, on the plane. And then we actually do this little trick. It's a pro tip that my sister, who has six children, taught me. Uh, which is we stuff extra towels if we're going to a beach vacation or extra jackets if we're coming from a cold location and aren't going to need our jackets where we're going or if we're going to a cold location and um, we'll need them where we're going. We stuff them into the car seat bag and then you don't have to have the space for them in your suitcase. Um, And then uh, we keep infants and toddlers on our lap And you are not able to, FAA regulations do not allow you to wear an infant in a carrier during takeoff and landing. But those are the times when a baby's ears hurt the most because of the altitude changes. So just like swallowing when you're chewing gum, it creates saliva and you have to swallow and that's what allows that pressure change. So nursing really helps that. And so I try to hold off my infant and my toddler on nursing until the very last minute when we're taking off or when we're landing. And usually my my kids always nursed at takeoff and landing. They hardly ever cried. And it uh, often they would fall asleep and they would sleep for a long time. And I could just sit there and sleep myself or stare at my quiet child on a plane and um, get a little rest time myself. So usually for most of the time, I did most of the work in the airport, trying to keep them occupied, trying to get them running, trying to get all of their energy out. And then they would kind of conk out while nursing on my lap in the plane. Um, And if you're feeling, I always felt especially in the beginning, or once I had a a bigger child that people were surprised that I was nursing, I always felt a little more self-conscious in those close quarters, nursing a child. But honestly, the seats are so high that really only the people right next to you can see you nursing that baby. And so there's lots of clothing. I'm sure anyone who's nursing a baby is familiar with all of the clothing (laughs) that you can get that can really um, help you to be able to nurse discreetly. This was really never a, a problem for me, except on an airplane. I really felt like I wanted really discreet nursing clothing. And um, one brand that I really liked was Latched Mama. I felt like the clothing was really high quality. It's a little more expensive than some of the things that you can buy, but high quality, really cute, fits bodies of all sizes. You can get extra small to multiple XLs. And, you know, they have dresses, T-shirts, sweatshirts, all different styles and prints. And so I really recommend them as a brand. And it really helped me when I was sitting in kind of those close quarters in an airplane. And then by car, when I did road trips with my babies, I always just expected for it to take a lot longer because you can't nurse with them in your lap when you're traveling by car. So I knew that anytime my baby wanted to nurse that I was going to have to stop and pull over and give them wiggle breaks 
and nurse them in the car. And so if it was an eight hour road trip, I expected that trip to take 12 hours and I would just calculate that. And my kids really have both loved podcasts from a very early age, um, kid friendly podcasts, obviously. So we always listen to podcasts on the road. And one thing that we did was we would leave late at night. So like 10 or 11 o'clock for road trips. And that way, you know, I would nurse right before we got in the car then they would conk out pretty soon. Except for that one time, we gave my preschooler an entire package of Twizzlers leaving for uh, Thanksgiving at about 11 p.m. It was an eight-hour car ride, and I'm pretty sure he was up until about two or three that night because he was wired from the Twizzlers. So don't do that. I'm going to end by asking you to join my Milk Making Minutes community group. If you have travel tips, if you have traveled with your baby extensively or even just a few times and it went really smoothly, I want to hear your tips. Come join my group on Facebook. We can talk about chipping away these barriers so that it becomes easier and easier for those behind us because I know a lot of people are going to be traveling this season. This can be a topic of conversation for this week or moving forward as we come into the holidays. I would love to hear your thoughts in that group. See you there.